Captain Midnight. This video is brought to you by Ground News. Alright, here's the deal. I usually try not to make videos based around movie rumors that I don't really trust, but uh, to be honest, I just felt like breaking that rule this week. Not because I think there's something exceptionally true about this rumor, but because it gives me a jumping off point to talk about something I haven't checked in on for a while, the state of the live action Spider-Man movies. I discussed Madam Web and Sony's slate of uh, villainous IP extensions a while back, but the webhead himself, it's been a bit. I want to address this rumor from World of Real, which again has a highly mixed track record on this stuff and kind of use it as a springboard. The rumor is that Justin Lin, the director of Star Trek Beyond and Fast Five, may be taking over for John Watts on Spider-Man 4. I just really miss talking Spidey, and I figured now was as good a time as any. So let's get into it, because I do have a lot of thoughts. But real quick, if you're a fan of obscure superhero movies and fun oddities of film history, Godzilla Mendoza made a great video about the Roger Corman-produced Fantastic Four movie, which has never had an official release. I guess the cast saw that video and are now making a push to finally get one. I'll link that video down in the description and it's probably worth checking out that petition if we can make it happen. Anyway, Spider-Man 4 is in a weird spot. So that rumor got me thinking about what kind of director I'd like to see for this movie and if Lin would be a good fit or not. And to be honest, I think I've been kind of harsh on him a few times on this channel, like a long time ago. Star Trek Beyond didn't really click with me on release, but I was surprised to find out how much I enjoyed it going back to it. It feels like an original series episode that just happens to be really fast paced and feature more action than usual. And while I still don't love some of the choices, especially with how they handled the villain, I do think it's a really enjoyable Trek film. And look, I'll cop to not being the biggest Fast and Furious fan, but Fast Five and Tokyo Drift are, I think, some of the best entries there, even if I do still think Seven was the peak. I know there's been a lot of criticism of John Watts' lack of style in these past three MCU movies, and though I really enjoyed them, I do understand where people are coming from. Justin Lin, given the time and the leeway to really do his thing, should be able to elevate the action set pieces quite a bit. And it's hard not to watch Beyond or some of the better action and chase sequences in his Fast and Furious films and not get excited by the possibility of what he could do with Spidey in the action department. And I don't say that lightly. Thinking about the ultra fast pace and sense of escalation that he's always brought to the table does genuinely excite me. And I think it could provide something that could set this movie apart from the previous three. Something that I'm sure the producers want the film to do with a new director and a very soft reboot provided by the ending of No Way Home. I may not always be Lin's number one fan. To be honest, I thought F9 was a real dud, but I think there's room for him to do something really exciting here. I would be pretty happy to see Lin take a shot at it. He left the Fast and Furious franchise very suddenly and unexpectedly, and though people who look down on those movies might dread him being anywhere near Spider-Man, I think his work on Star Trek Beyond shows that he can bring the best parts of his FF style over to other things while working in very different tones. Beyond may have a lot of the action that he's known for, but it feels more like Star Trek than the previous film Into Darkness did. And between doing so many fast movies and Beyond's mild box office disappointment, I wouldn't be surprised if Lin is eager to prove he can make a big, successful movie outside of Vin Diesel and the gang. And very importantly, I think he's a big enough name with an established enough resume of success that he wouldn't be pushed around by Sony and Marvel so easily. It's been long, I'll say speculated, that Disney likes hiring young indie directors fresh off the festival circuit because, yes they show promise, but also they're much easier to control. I'm sure that was even tougher for John Watts, who directed the fairly obscure Clown and Cop Car before Homecoming, because he was caught between two studios, with Sony also being very important in this mix. I think he did a good job, but I think whoever takes that directing job next needs to have some clout to really push through their own vision. Something that feels at least a little bit more possible now with the MCU and Sony's live action spider movies at a low ebb. 
I think Lynn fits that bill, but the second part of that Lynn rumor is a little less promising. With it stating that the movie is slated to begin filming in September or October of this year, that seems like a very bad idea. Maybe if Lynn was already signed and they had a completely finished script for months, but that doesn't appear to be the case with rumors that Sony and Marvel have very different takes on what they want this movie to be. Honestly, we don't even know for sure that Tom Holland has signed a new Spider-Man contract. Now, Kevin Feige said he's returning all the way back in 2022, but Holland has gone out of his way to say he might be ready to move on, and he won't do it unless he feels like there's a worthy script out there. Now, I would be shocked if Holland doesn't return. He signed a six-picture deal before Civil War when he was a relatively unknown actor. That finally ended, so for the first time he has some real leverage with the studios and that could land him a really major payday. So I'm guessing him publicly stating his willingness to walk is just smart negotiation. But the point remains that this does not seem like a project that will be ready to shoot anytime soon. And I really hope they're not rushing it into production just to have another Spider-Man movie out. Contract or not, Holland is right. They should wait on a good script. And if Disney is smart, they'll insist on that. The MCU is not in the position that it was when No Way Home came out just a few years ago. And a bad Spider-Man movie, their remaining marquee character, is just about the last thing they need. So I really hope this isn't the actual timetable for this project because it seems like at best it would be a quick work for hire job. And I would like the next Spider-Man director to bring more of themselves to it. Who would I like to see? Well, Captain America the First Avenger director Joe Johnston has seemingly been in director's jail since the disastrous Disney Nutcracker movie, which I admit is not the best example of his work. But I like that first Cap movie a lot, and I'm also a huge fan of The Rocketeer, which he did back in the 90s. He's getting up there in age, but if he's up for it, I think he'd make a really good Spider-Man film. And moments like skinny Steve Rogers jumping on a grenade to save the lives of everyone around him is exactly the kind of earnest moments of heroism I'd like to see return more to the MCU, and Johnston has always had a good touch with that kind of stuff, and a sense of humor to go along with it. And if the Highlander reboot doesn't work out, I'd love to see John Wick's Chad Stahelski take a shot at the webhead. Stylistically, it'd be such a departure from what came before, and I think that'd be crazy exciting. Really, I just desperately want to know what those action scenes would look like. Now, the more cynical among you are probably thinking that you don't want a great director trapped by the MCU machinery, and I understand that. I am being pretty optimistic here and hoping that these directors would have a lot of creative control in things like the action scenes. It's a valid point, and honestly, I wouldn't blame anyone for not wanting to give them the benefit of the doubt at this point, but I do think there is going to be some reshuffling going on at the MCU, some new ways to do things, and honestly, most importantly, for me, this is Spider-Man we're talking about, and I'm always going to hope for the best. Which leads me to one last rumor I wanted to touch on, this lingering possibility of another Raimi McGuire Spider-Man movie. Now, I think this is incredibly unlikely, but to be fair, Raimi has expressed interest, Sandman actor Thomas Hayden Church randomly seemed to assume it was happening, and Kirsten Dunst has even said she would return for it, solely for a paycheck, but hey, that's something, right? Yeah, like I said, unlikely. Still, right now, in the comics, Ultimate Spider-Man has returned, this time it's taking the story of a much older Peter married to MJ with two kids, and it is really, really good so so far. As far as being an inspiration for this possible movie goes, I don't think it would work as a direct sequel to Spider-Man 3 or anything, considering in this universe Peter is just getting his powers for the first time, but I still think it could serve as the basis for something really good on film, combined with Raimi's huge fondness for the Lee Ditko 60s run. How would this work alongside Holland's Peter? Like, would he be in the movie? I don't know, honestly. I think one crossover there was probably enough. But if Sony is going to be making all these Spider-Man related movies anyway, why not do one with Maguire and make it distinct from the MCU Spidey? His appearance in No Way Home makes it feel not impossible. Like, do you risk saturating the Spider-Man brand too much? 
Um, yeah, but they're already doing that. Like, that ship has sailed. So they may as well do it with a movie that people would legitimately be excited about and not, I don't know, Manwolf or whatever villain project they scheme up next. The Spider-Verse movies are one thing, and that seems to be going well, but really, the live-action Spider-Man is at a bit of a crossroads. They have an MCU lead who seems a little ambivalent about coming back, and we have movies like Madam Web doing a lot of strange things in the background. But that No Way Home ending was unique. It gives them the opportunity to try something new, to work with a nearly clean slate. And I really hope they don't rush something into production and are able to fully take advantage of that. Of course, I'd happily take another Maguire Raimi film too. Look, if J. Jonah Jameson taught us anything, it's that we need to pay close attention to the accuracy of our news sources. That's why Ground News is such an invaluable tool. It offers a wide range of national and international news stories, drawing from reliable sources worldwide. Ground News provides insight into which news outlets are covering the story, their political leanings, and allows you to compare how different perspectives are handling the coverage. I know the TikTok debate is all over the news right now, and Ground News is a great place to find a really wide-reaching look at how it's being covered. And I really recommend the blind spot feature, which gives you stories that one side of the political spectrum disproportionately covers. And the app presents all this info in a clean, readable format that's super easy to understand. I think the service is especially crucial in today's media landscape where social media algorithms just tell us what we want to hear. It also evaluates the accuracy and bias of each source, which goes a long way for transparency. So that's Ground News. It compares news coverage from around the world on a platform driven by data, helping us gain a much more nuanced view of current events. Plus, there's a great deal going on right now. Try Ground News today at ground.news slash Captain Midnight and receive a 40% discount. That's ground.news slash Captain Midnight. Here's a special tip for the fellas and girls who have not already joined Captain Midnight's new 1940 Flight Patrol. You'd better hurry up and join at once because there's a big adventure ahead. The thing to do now is to get started because we're going to have not only barrels of fun, but loads of free gifts and prizes too.